Well, hello. Today is Thursday, January 14th, and we have gone from feast to famine. No, from famine to feast, right? Yeah, famine to feast. I had to get the terminology right because we have a lot of birthdays today. <coughs> get my throat ready because we have so many. Today is Ethan Carpenter over at Weight Watch. No, WV Running Down. Ethan's birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ethan. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Well, hope you have a great day, Ethan. It's also Dolly Wilder's birthday, so Dolly gets a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dolly. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Diane Kirby. You get a song, too. i got an itchy nose. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Diane. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Also, it's Mimi's birthday. Mimi gets a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mimi. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. And, of course, Paige Parson Lewis. Yeah, it's your birthday, Paige. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Paige. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Well, I hope you all have a great birthday, and thank you for letting me sing. It perks my day up. It just perks my day up. Um, what was I going to talk about? I apologize for the car yesterday. I was just, last night when I was editing, and I saw that it was hard to hear. When I turned the volume up on my uh, computer, I could hear it. It was still kind of rattling noises because of the car. But uh, I was just too lazy. I was too tired. I was so tired because I had, like I told you the night before, I didn't sleep really well. And um, I went to bed early for me. I went to bed the time I should have went the night before. <laughs> I went to bed just before midnight. Uh, that was really early for me because I usually don't go to bed till 2. But I was so tired and I slept so sound. And I slept until 9 o'clock this morning. I slept a solid 9 hours. So I knew I was tired if I slept that many hours. But... Um, but by the time I was editing and everything, and I thought, I don't know, I'm just, I know you, yeah. I should have just typed underneath what I was saying. <laughs> but then that would, have, that would have required effort, too, and I just didn't have it in me. And then uh, Gina Pearson had called me, or I had called Gina because I was asking her about uh, trying to edit the video on my Mac. And uh, we had it all set up and everything, and I did a closing, and I had her on it, and the whole bit, the whole shot. And uh, I said, well, i got to leave now because my dinner is ready. And so she says, oh, just airdrop it and it'll be fine. So I went to airdrop it and the airdrop failed. And then Jim got home from work. And so I thought, I'm just going to do everything on my phone. And then when I saw that it was, you couldn't hear it. So I apologize. Uh, the lesson I've learned is I can't do it in the car because I can't figure out. My car runs really well, but I don't understand the, uh, it, it, does, it was loud. I'm not going to say it wasn't because it was loud. But I think when I was just sitting in the car, like when I did you showed you my grocery haul or when I showed you my cards or when I was venting about my um, mammogram, that uh, I think you could hear me fine then. I think it was just when I was driving because I think of the engine noise. So lesson learned, can't do that. But on the mammogram news, if you couldn't hear it, I think that I made it pretty clear is that I had called the day before my doctor's office to make sure that they faxed over the orders for my mammogram and I was assured that it was going to be done and then when I got there it wasn't done and then I was told that uh, the doctor wouldn't be until tomorrow so I'd have to call back tomorrow to, and then I'd have to reschedule and you know all that. Um, I got a call from the uh, mammogram center, the breast center, this morning that miraculously this morning my doctor had called in my order for my mammogram and then they're going to fit me in for Saturday morning at 1130. I'll take it. Uh, you know, I'll just take it because uh, I, I really do think that they realize that they screwed up. I'm still looking for another doctor. Maybe they heard that in the uh, atmosphere that I was doing that. But uh, I, I need to get one a little closer to home. The, one, the doctor that I go to is probably about 35 to 40 minutes away. And I'm sure that there's got to be something closer because the hospitals where I live aren't close anyhow. I think the nearest hospital is about a half hour away. And then the other one is like 35 minutes away. And then there's one more that's about 30 minutes away. So uh, we're not in a good location for hospitals. So as long as I can get 
a doctor that uh, is in the same network because of my insurance, but I, I don't see a problem with that. So I'm going to go get my mammogram done on Saturday at 11.30. And uh, that's about it, I guess. just kind of aggravates me that I already went, but it just shows that they realize that they, they messed up. And then I was watching some videos this morning, and I was watching Kim at a girl on her phone, and she was talking. Well, it was funny because she was talking. She said, I hear it. I hear it. There's, 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 a, there's a critter underneath my house because she could hear him in the insulation. It reminded me of a story, Kim, which I kind of commented somewhat on your video, but, um, you know, I can only type so much. I, you know, I am a little bit of a long-winded person. If you've watched my channel, you know that. But uh, at one point... We had just bought a, we had bought a new house. We had, we had rented when we first got married. We rented an upper flat. Then we rented a house from the church, and we lived there for like 10 years. I love that house. But it was time to move on. At the time, uh, they, were gonna, they were gonna eliminate the VA housing loans. And they, at the time, the loans were really at a low interest rate. And so we just figured that was our time right then to get the house. Because I, I really didn't mind renting. I, I like buying more now, so more so now. But at the time, I kind of liked just renting because the Jim was working so many hours. He was working out of state. If I ever ran into a problem, I would just call the landlord, and then they would fix it. Especially when you work for the church, when you rent from the church, you know. But uh, so anyway, we decided to buy this house, and it was the very first house we looked at. And the um, the uh, what do you call it? The description for the house is a speck of dust would die of loneliness. I got to see this house. I got to see this house. The first house, though, we had told our agent, the, the real estate agent that we had, we did not want to live on a busy street. We did not want a corner house. And we did. We had to have four bedrooms because I wanted. I had three kids and I wanted them each have their own room. So that, those are the only three stipulations we had. We didn't put a price on how much we wanted to spend because we thought we'd get a look at what it is and figure it out from there. Because back then you apply, you went and got it, then you applied for your mortgage. Not like now where you get pre-approved. Back then you waited until you saw something and then your hopes were dashed when you found out that you couldn't afford it. But uh, the very first house she brought us was on the corner of a busy street and it was a three bedroom. And we got there and we pulled up and I looked at the house and I told Jim, I said, this can't be the house she's, she's sending us to. It must be that she's got lost and she's just pulling us over to give us directions to another place. And she gets out of the car and she walks up and she says, well, here we go. And uh, I said, well, I'm not looking at this house. And she says, well, no, it's, it's a perfect house. It's, it's a good price. They're, the owners are, have an incentive to, to sell. And I go, well, how many bedrooms does it have? And she says, three. I went, eh. And so she says, well, I says, I told you we have to have four. Well, what else, what else don't you like about it? She says, well, at least just come and look at it. And I go, no, it doesn't meet any of the criteria that I told you. I did not want to live on a corner. I did not want to live on a busy street. And it had to be a four bedroom. So we're just going to go home. If you can find something else, we'll stay with you. Otherwise, we're going to another real estate agent. So she called us the next day. She says, well, I found another house in the same area. It is not on a busy street. It is definitely a four bedroom. And I said, okay, and it's not on a corner. I says, okay, well, it was pretty close. <laughs> it was in the third house from the corner, but it was still not a corner house, so that was fine. And when I walked into the house, that was the house that said, a speck of dust would die of loneliness. And I thought, I got to see this house. I just, whether she's, whether it's a four bedroom or not, I'm going to go in this house because I have to see this four bed, you know, like a house that has no dust. Oh my goodness gracious. You could not find not a speck of dust in this house. Nowhere. Not on a water heater, not on a furnace, not on a vent. It was like it was a brand new house and somebody had come in and professionally cleaned it before they put it on the market. It was gorgeous. It was just gorgeous. And as soon as I walked in the door, before I even looked for dust, I fell in love with the house. I just knew that this was the house. This was the house I was going to buy. And uh, we looked at the house and when we were upstairs... I had some bathroom issues. And so I told Jim, I said, I got to use the bathroom. He says, well, just flush the toilet and see if it works. I go, oh, no, I have to use the facilities because I'll never make it to the gas station or a restaurant or anywhere else. So I went in there and used the facilities, and I just felt so comfortable sitting there. <laughs> I thought, this is it. This is my house. <laughs> this is just it. And I'm sure that when they heard the toilet flush, they just thought, you know, that it was uh, me testing everything out. But I just... 
I just knew that that was the house that we wanted. And so then I told, and Jim says, no, we're going to look at more houses. And so we did look at probably about four or five. Oh, the second house we looked at, it was awful. The man was sitting there in his boxer shorts on his barca lounge or lazy boy or whatever you want to call it, drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette, letting us walk through the house, stepping over dirty clothes, went to the kitchen. He had burnt stuff all over the stove. It was like we went from a speck of doubt, uh, loneliness to like, oh my gosh, the party starts here <laughs> because it was like, it was awful. Although I did like the layout of the house. I really did, but it just didn't have that homey feeling, obviously. And uh, and I kind of got the feeling that the guy came with the house. <laughs> and I think he's not coming to this house. And as much as I did like it and it was a good price and everything, I just kept thinking that the other house was the house that I wanted. And uh and it eventually was, because we looked at like three or four more houses. And we went back to the first house like three times. Um, come to find out that the reason that the house was so clean was the people, the husband that lived there, his, um, he was like, a, him and his wife were like fanatics. Like they washed the windows inside and out once a week, even in the winter. They cleaned, the, they, they were like, they were like probably OCD, but they were like perfectly clean. And then I didn't find out until I was in there probably a couple months and we had a really I know I'm getting to the story trust me I am getting to the story uh we were in there a couple months and I was talking to one of the neighbors and I was just commenting and I said I feel bad his name was uh Dennis I said I feel so bad if Dennis was ever to come back in he'd see lots of dust <laughs> and then she that's when she explained that you know like he was they were both such fanatics about cleaning and then she told me that um, his wife had died in the home, which they didn't tell us when we bought the house, which I thought that they were supposed to. I think it's only if there's a murder. But, oh, that reminds me of another story. I'll have to tell you that another day. But anyway, um, and a murder is involved. Um, tomorrow, I promise. I'll write a note. Murder story. I'll write this down so I'll remember it for tomorrow. So I will tell you the murder story tomorrow. So anyway, um... She had said that, that she had died, and uh, when, after she had died, he went even more excessive as far as cleaning, and that's why the house was so, you know, spectacularly clean. And, uh, and so then ever since that, because I am kind of superstitious, just about that much. And then um, I kept thinking her ghost was in the house. And I kept telling Jim, I think there's a ghost in the house. I think it's his wife. I forget what her name was. And uh, what was it? I think it was Brenda. For some reason, it reminds me it was Brenda. But anyway, I kept saying, Brenda's in the house. Brenda's haunting me. And he says, no, Brenda. No, we're getting to the story now. Brenda's always haunting me. And he Jim says, oh, you're crazy. You're not. You're just imagining things. Well, then Jim got another job. Uh, well, he was on the same, like, he was a sprinkler fitter. But it was a job that had to be done midnights because they had to do it when there weren't people in the building. And so he was working midnights. And I would lay in bed and I would hear this noise and it sounded like it was in the wall. It sounded like something was walking up the wall and then walking all over the ceiling. And it was like they were having a party. It was like, and I kept thinking, it's her ghost because this is the room she died in. And I kept thinking, and every night when he, or morning when he would get home, I'd say, I heard Brenda. I heard her again. He says, you're crazy. I said, there's a noise. I hear a noise. It's, it's something in the wall. It's something in the attic. I don't know that she's ever been in the attic. I had never gone in the attic. And uh, he says, you're crazy. And I, every night I'd hear this, every night. And so finally... Like the fifth night, like Monday through Friday, I heard it every night, and Jim kept saying, you're crazy, you're crazy. On Friday night, obviously, he didn't have to, or Saturday night, he didn't have to work because he had worked, no, it was Friday night because he worked Sunday to Friday. Um, Friday night, he's laying in bed, and I said, do you hear? I woke him up because Jim's a very sound sleeper. I woke him up. Do you hear that? Of course, it stops. He says, I didn't hear nothing. Go back to sleep. So I'm laying there, and I hear it again, and I bump him again, and I go, it's up there. It's up there. I can hear it. And he says, I don't hear anything. I says, just lay here awake with me for a couple minutes because it'll happen again. So he lay there awake a couple minutes and then sure enough, you could hear the noise. It was all like party time in the attic. He says, I don't know what that is. I think something's just fallen or something. I said, let's go up and look. He says, okay. So he goes up like the big brave man with his flashlight. And I'd never been in the attic, like I told you. And so we climb up into the attic to get into the attic. And I'm like right behind him because I'm, I'm going to see this ghost in person. <laughs> and he flashes the light. And just then this thing comes charging at him because the light kind of startled it. We had two raccoons up in our attic. And they had charged Jim. <laughs> and Jim, I've never seen him move so fast. Of course, I was even faster. I was down. I was out of that attic 
way before him. I saw the little beady little eyes and I was out of there. <laughs> I don't care whether it was an animal or a ghost. There was beady little eyes looking at me and I just took off running. And then Jim comes out and he slams the door because there was a door to get to the attic. And he slammed the door and he says, I think we've got some creatures in the, free, in the attic. And I go, duh, I've been telling you that all week. So at the time they had a place called Critter Control and they came the next the next day. They did come on a Saturday. I was surprised. They did come on Saturday, and uh, they set some traps in the attic. And I had noticed that there was a stain in our living room above our uh, our ceiling light. We had a, like a we had, well, they had made that their dining room, and so they had a chandelier that we never took down. I kept saying that's the first thing to go, and it was like the last thing I ever got rid of in my house. I kept saying first thing to go, first thing to go, and I never did. But anyway. We kind of looked and there was like a yellow ring all around the, uh, the base of the light. And so then after they caught the creatures, <laughs> there was two of them, there was two raccoons, no wonder it sounded like a party. Um, we saw where they were urinating, was right above where it was, it was like this little alcove and the, the ce we had to replace the ceiling even. Well, we got rid of the, we got rid of the chandelier that I kept saying we were going to get rid of because we had to repatch it and we put a ceiling fan in the whole bed. But, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, I, I was, I loved it that I was right. But then a couple weeks after that, we had a mouse in the house. And Jim, I guess, has never been around mice. We always had mice in my house when I was growing up because we lived by a field, so we always had field mice. And he was not really scared of them, but it was right after the raccoon incident. And we were sitting in the family room, and I told him, I said, we have a mouse in the house. And he says, oh, we don't have a mouse. I said, we had raccoons, and you didn't believe me. And so he said, okay, so he set this trap around the, the, uh, what do you call it, the vent, because that's where we kept seeing him come in and out of the vent. So he set four traps all the way around with some peanut butter and crackers in it. And then we went to bed. And just when I knew he was just falling asleep, because I don't like feet, I don't like feet touching me, my feet weren't going to touch you, none of that stuff. I kind of nudged him and I says, I hear something. And he goes, what? I says, I think that mouse is in the bedroom. And then just then I just kind of gently dragged my toe along his leg. I says, he's in the bed. He jumped up so fast. He went, and he was so mad because then they found out it was me. <laughs> it's like, I thought, well, you know what? That's what, get, that's what you get. That's what you get for doubting me. And then in the morning, we did catch the mouse. And we only had the one mouse. I was surprised. It was just the one. Usually you have more than one. Don't ever think you have one. You always have more than one. But we kept setting traps and we never got any. And the, and the sad part was we had a dog and we had a cat. And we still had a mouse. So... Okay, I kind of long-winded again. We are going to uh, end the video now, but I'm going to show you my food um, that I'm going to eat today. And then um, I'm going to call Gina again later on this afternoon and see if she can walk me through a little bit more to see what's going on with the uh, Mac. So, as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, and please, please, please stay safe. We're so close. We're so close to the end. Well, I know we still almost have a year to go, but to me, that's so close because we've already put a year into it. So just be safe. Well, I've realized that I never told you how we got the raccoons in the attic in the first place is uh, really quick. My son, Jimmy, was dating a girl and he had bought her a cat that he named Axel, that they had named Axel. And when they broke up, uh, the, the girl didn't want the cat anymore, so she brought the cat back. And Axel did not get along with Minnie Moo, but Axel was more of an outside cat. So uh, anyhow, because she never let him in the house anyhow. So we used to leave the food, and we had like a door that, that you could leave open in the garage so that the, do the cat could get in and out so it would have some warmth. And we used to feed it in the garage. Well, that's how we got the raccoons. And then what the raccoons did was they had climbed up something to get to the, like there's a little thing in the eaves between the house, because we had an attached garage. So they were able to get in through that. So when the critter control, when they caught the raccoons, found out where they were getting in, and we put some wiring, wire mesh up to keep the, uh, any more creatures from getting into our attic. We have an architect in the audience who okay, it's breakfast time. I got my berries back. Today is Thursday, January 14th. My quote is, you'll never know your strengths until you've faced your struggles. It's a nine-point breakfast, zero for my eggs, berries, and my grapefruit. I forgot to put the banana on there. Four, and my tea, four points for an ounce of cheese, two points for my toast, and three points for my peanut butter. I still have 14 points left for dinner and my lunch.